want to get to a CBS News Colorado investigation that's new for you tonight. With tens of thousands more Coloradans expected to buy electric vehicles in the next few years, we're learning many power grids aren't yet ready to handle the added power demands to charge those vehicles. Your investigator Katie Wise speaking with experts tonight about major improvements needed to make sure your home and power grids alike can keep up. Uh, this is a thermomagnetic breaker. When it senses heat in there, the breaker will automatically click or shut off. Electrician so, Rory Baruman has added more power so he can charge his new electric vehicle in his own garage. As, see, as the executive um, director of the Rocky Mountain chapter of the National Electrical Contractors Association, he's also been working with others in the energy industry to figure out how to add more power on a larger scale. He says grids across Colorado will need critical updates as more people by EVs. I think some of the goals are very lofty. I think, uh, you know, I know there's a lot of issues and we're in meetings and they're very contested from both sides. He says right now, many of Colorado's older electric grids aren't built to handle the power demands of EV charging. So hypothetically, if suddenly everyone had an EV charging at once, that could cause blackouts. Well, you could have outages. Or he says the demand might mean sacrificing other electric luxuries. It's called like brownout, where people can't turn on the air conditioning at certain times. But he says wait lists for many EVs and driver anxiety about how far these cars can go on one charge is slowing many Coloradans from switching over too fast. Something he says will buy some time for power companies to make changes before black or brownouts become a problem. However, he says supply chain and manpower challenges are also still creating big obstacles. To make sure we can perform all these works with the deadlines that have been provided, it's going to be challenging to say the least. Executives at the Tri-State Generation and Transmission Association agree that grid management is going to be critical. There is definitely going to be uh, a requirement to manage the distribution grids uh, better. And that's something that we've been working on for the last couple of years. As a co-op, Tri-State sells power to smaller electric companies across Colorado. The company's chief energy innovations officer, Reg Rudolph, says they're working with their members to balance power demands. I think what we're trying to do and, and work with all of the, the regional partners, whether it's the, the car suppliers, political organizations like state governments, county governments and so forth, what does that public infrastructure need to look like? Do you guys feel like you have enough manpower at this point? Absolutely, because we we, we have a, a, a public need and necessity to serve our members 8,760 hours a year. I also spoke with Excel Energy about the challenges ahead. That's definitely on our radar, and that's where I think this proactive distribution system planning is so critical. Nadia El Malik is the vice president of Clean Transportation and Strategic Partnerships for Excel. She says her company is spending $50 million on what she calls no regrets investments, and she says Excel is working on advanced metering technology that will help them decide which grid areas need updates sooner. We can more quickly see and isolate where an outage is. This is going to be really important for EVs in the future. Industry experts also tell us changes at the state legislative level will need to be made, like financial supports for infrastructure, streamlining permitting processes, and incentivizing the expansion of the electrician workforce. Back at Baruman's house in southeast Aurora, he says while industries figure out major grid fixes to accommodate electric vehicles, there may also be some important upgrades your own home will need if you're hopping on the EV train. If your home is an older home with a lower amp panel, you may need to have it replaced. He says it's an upgrade that could cost you up to three to four thousand dollars. If you have a 60 or a smaller amp panel, um, you're probably going to need to upgrade your service. Right now, it's less stress on the grid to charge your EV overnight when there's less demand from other appliances. But that can come with safety risks if something is wrong with your car's lithium ion battery. There was an explosion at this garage in Erie when a vehicle's lithium battery was smoking and firefighters applied water to it. Firefighters recommend you are around when you charge your EV in case something goes wrong, so you can call 911. So what should you do? Should you charge overnight or during the day while you're awake? Well, experts say that there's a good compromise. You can charge overnight, but at a lower power level, so that way you're charging more slowly and safely. I only use 80% uh, of the uh, capacity that I'm supposed to be using to charge in there. 
So I think uh, we have a 50 amp breaker in there. I'm using well under that. And, I, and a lot of the new cars, you can set that in your car. Bottom line, experts tell us EVs are an environmentally friendly, fun to drive way of the future. But it's important for homeowners, power companies, and state leaders alike to do some homework before we can get to 940,000 EVs in Colorado by 2030. There is a lot of work and we're going to need to get a lot of people trained to do the work. I'm investigator Katie Weiss covering Colorado First. Well, right now we are posting links to rebate resources and other incentive programs for electric vehicles. Katie also took a look into adding EV equipment to your house. You can find it all inside her report on CBSColorado.com.